Let's talk about some common forces that you'll see as you're doing problems in physics. So when we're talking about force, we learned about Newton's second law, F equals ma. Uh, let's look at the units that are involved in there. For mass, we always measure that in kilograms. Our acceleration is always measured in meters per second squared. And force is measured in kilogram meters per second squared. But we have a special name for that. We call it a Newton, and we denote that with a capital N. So the first common force you'll find, the most common force you'll find, is gravity, which we denote as F with a subscript G. Uh, now this is one of the forces that acts at a distance. You'll find that forces either act at a distance using some sort of field, such as a gravitational field, or a magnetic field, or electric field, uh, or they will be a contact force. Gravity is the first uh, action at a distance force that we're going to talk about. Uh, now the force due to gravity is also called an object's weight because we can have mass, and that is intrinsic to the object. It doesn't matter where it is, it could be out in the middle of space, have no weight, but it would still have mass. When you have gravity, that gives an object its weight. So the force due to gravity is an object's weight. The acceleration due to gravity is a constant as long as we're near the surface of the Earth. If you're on the surface of another planet, it would be a different constant. But on the surface of the Earth, or near the surface of the Earth, our acceleration due to gravity gets a special letter, a lowercase g, and that is always equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Doesn't matter where you are or what's happening, as long as you're near the surface of the Earth, 9.8 meters per second squared. And the equation for the force of gravity, Fg equals mg. Now a second force we'll find a lot of times is called the normal force. Uh, normal is not as opposed to an abnormal force. Normal is the mathy way of saying perpendicular. It is a contact force it acts perpendicular to whatever surface there is. So you can see here this first block, you have the force of gravity acting downward on the block, and uh, the block is being supported by the floor. Well, because of Newton's third law, we have uh, an action and reaction force, we have a force pair. So the block exerts a force down on the floor, the floor exerts an equal and opposite force back up on the block. That equal and opposite force up on the block is called the normal force, and it's perpendicular to the floor. A lot of times it's going to be equal to the force of gravity, but it doesn't have to be. And there's going to be plenty of, of situations where that's not true, such as the second block, where you have an extra force pushing down along with gravity. That means the normal force is going to have to be bigger because it has to counteract both the force of gravity and that extra force. Now, uh, if you have something on a slant, such as we have over here, uh, you have the force of gravity still acting straight down. That doesn't change no matter if you're on a hill or on a flat. But the normal force always acts perpendicular to the surface. So now the normal force does not act exactly opposite gravity. It always acts perpendicular to the surface. And we'll see more how to deal with inclined planes later. Friction is another common force. It's a contact force. You have to have two surfaces in contact for there to be friction. Now, friction always acts parallel to the surface. So if you're pushing a box along the floor, you're going to experience friction parallel to the floor. And the direction you're going to experience it is it's going to be opposite the direction of motion. Friction always acts opposite the direction of motion. Sometimes you'll encounter a problem where there is no motion, but there still is friction. Think about uh, a book sitting on a slanted table. Uh, it's not moving but there's still friction. The friction is the reason it's not moving. What you do in that situation, you would uh, see what direction the, box, the block would move without friction, and then friction opposes that. And spring forces. Springs exert a force, surprisingly enough. It's also a contact force. Now it always acts opposite the direction the spring is stretched or compressed. So if you compress a spring, it's going to be pushing back on you. If you're stretching a spring, it's going to be pulling back on you. So it always acts opposite the direction it's stretched or compressed. And it's also proportional to how stretched or compressed the spring is. So if you really compress the spring a lot, it's going to be pushing back really strongly. If you only pull on it a little bit, it's only going to pull back a little bit. And if you just leave it alone and don't stretch it or compress it, no force. It's also proportional to, to the, uh, the spring itself. Some springs are just stiffer than others. Think about the difference between a spring that supports your car or a slinky. They're very different strengths. Uh, so the stiffness of the spring does have an effect. And we have this equation for the strength of the force of a spring. 
uh, force equals minus kx, where k is called the spring constant. It's measured in newtons per meter. The spring constant just tells us how stiff or not stiff the spring is. Uh, a low number would be a slinky, a very weak spring. A high number would be like a spring on a garage door or underneath a car, some very strong spring. X is the displacement from equilibrium. We measure that in meters. That's just how far you stretched it or compressed it from the spring's relaxed length. And the negative sign, that just shows us that it, the force always acts opposite the direction it's displaced. And the last force we're going to talk about here is tension. And we denote that with a capital T. Sometimes you'll see that as an FT. We're just going to have it be a T here. It's also a contact force. It's the force exerted by a string or a rope. You have to have a string or a rope in order for there to be tension. And it always is going to act along the string or a rope. So it, just looking at the string and rope, what direction it's being pulled or uh, what direction it's supporting something, that's going to be the direction you're going to draw your force. And both sides of a, of a rope have the same tension. Uh, that's always true until you have pulleys that have mass, and you'll cover that in AP Physics.